Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another Twisted League video. This is my inventory. I don't think it's that good actually, but this is going to be my first attempt at a raid and I have no idea what I'm doing so I'll have to learn everything as I go. This is going to be pretty interesting. I did scout a few raids and the one I decided to choose was Guardians, Unknown Puzzle, Mystics, Shamans, Crabs and Mutadiles. I think this is the easiest one, so this step is really easy, like you can just do this all the time and it will take pretty much no damage with a, a pickaxe. Easily completed that room, so now I went and got some planks, so I'm going to build this storage. I think I can build a medium one, yeah, 90 for the large one. Uh, that might be a goal I will have to go for in the future because the medium one is uh, not as big obviously as the large one, so that is uh, one thing I can definitely improve on. So I think I'm now going to have to do some potions or something and get some food, but not really sure uh, how to do that, but uh, I will figure it out. Okay, so I went and read up a bit on how to do this. So I planted a bunch of, uh, of these herbs that I can't really remember the name of. They're Bacho Leaf, and uh, this is if I get the uh, uh, elixirs as well, or whatever they're called, the uh, potions on the bottom of my inventory. If I, and Darken the Juice is the name by the way, if I put them together, I make a Saradome Brew. Now, the problem is, if you're 78 Herb Lore, then you can make the highest tier ones, and I'm only 77, so that is quite a Phil's bad man. But <laughs> if I get one more level in the future, I can uh, make better brews, which I probably will definitely do after this raid regardless. So that did not take too long. I have now a lot of Saradomi brews and a lot of restores. I think I should probably in the future make more Saradomi brews than I make restores because you have these prayer in hands as well. So even though I have a lot of my prayers on at the same time, it doesn't actually drain that much. So yeah, pretty decent inventory now. So my second room, which was the puzzle, is the tightrope one, and I saw on a guy that you can just stand back here, and you can pretty much kill the mages without taking any damage at all, so you use your uh, shots there with long range, you run back to the skulls over here, and uh, then you go back and you shoot, and then you run again all the way back. Here comes the interesting part, I don't think you can dodge the damage of these uh, rangers, so uh, I don't even know if you can protect ranged versus them, I don't know if uh, it works. So you go here and you shoot once and you stay here. Okay, but now it's looking at me permanently. Let's see if I can remove the HP bar. Sh okay, it still shoots me. Two damage. I've seen some people like equip their melee gear just after they shot. So I'm going to try that. There we go. Okay, 12 damage. That's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, I I'll see how this goes and hopefully it won't be... Uh, too bad. I have a lot of food though, so probably not going to be that bad. And also if I do need more food, I can just run out of here and come back because they don't really de uh, respawn or anything. 17, that was uh, quite a hefty hit. And I didn't even swap my gear over, so I'm not sure. Do I actually really need to swap my gear over? Oh my god, dude, that 44. Okay, I will definitely try to do gear switches in the future. Well, here we go. This is the last one, so I do this. I equip my gear, run back. And uh, now I put my range gear on again, shoot, put my melee gear on again, and then I run back. And I didn't take too much damage. I mean, I used most of my food, but it's like the first time I ever do this, so... Of course, it's going to be a learning experience. In the future, I can hopefully take way less damage. So my third room is Mystics, and you can safe spot them, but... I still have another mage shooting me all the time, and I don't... I couldn't, can't really be ours running around and making them perfectly placed. So I'm just going to kill this one, meanwhile taking some damage from the other one. So this is a better example to show, like, you can place them like this, and they're too thick to go through this uh, small area when you place them like this. So after I killed the first one, I went over here, and now I can safe spot this one. It still can mage you or range you and hit you for damage, but it's just way less frequent because it tries to melee you most of the time, and it can't just... it can't reach. That is the third room completed. It has been 52 minutes. Now, most of this time has been AFK because I have been looking up guides on YouTube for every single room pretty much because I didn't know anything. So, yeah, I can definitely in the future if I get the same three rooms can do it way faster. This is going to be a disaster because I didn't understand really how the person in the guide did this, like how they say spot to them. And they, when they did it, they had another room than mine. So what I'm just going to do, because this is just normal shamans, except you don't actually have the Shazian gear, so you have to dodge the huge green things they shoot out. Um, you can see there, one of them shot it at my location, and another one, they have huge green ones. If they hit you, I think you get hit like a 35 or 40 uh, in poison damage. 
Uh, but what I'm going to do, as you can see here, is just run around and just kill them normally. Uh, I, I'm probably going to take a lot of damage, but I have so many brews anyways, and they don't really have that much HP. In the future, though, I'm going to try to do it way more. Yeah, there you see, 35 poison damage. That's <laughs> quite a lot of damage. But yeah, in the future, I will try my best to find the safe spots for these because having them jump all the time up like this is going to be quite annoying and just drains the time. Like, as you can see, I almost killed one of the shamans, but... Um, so, so it's not like it takes ages if you run around and they jump all the time, but you can make the room way easier if you know all the safe spots and all that. So yeah, it's uh, going to have to be a learning experience for this room specifically and learn all the different places you can uh, safe spot them. I actually thought you needed 90 herb lore to make any overloads, but apparently that's not the case. I can make normal overloads with the level I have right now, but 90 is for the best overload, so I will need to get that in the future as well. Dude, this room was so confusing because I didn't understand that you need to smash them to make them stay in place. I was like, dude, they always keep running away. Like, I don't know what to do. They always just formate in the wrong way. I want, I don't want them to place like this. And then I realized you can smash them and keep them in the same place. And well, the room became like 400 billion times easier. Okay, so I already completed this room and this is post commentary, but look at this. This room is really confusing because the animation on cutting the tree in the back is uh, pretty strange to say the least. But what you need to do is you need to play ranged when the small mutadile is uh, shooting from long range. You can see that is a ranged hit. And you can see I got a wood cutting experience drop. And I, it doesn't look like I'm cutting, but I, I think I actually am cutting. That's the confusing part. Um, because sometimes like I click on the tree and then I get hit and nothing happens. I click on the tree again, nothing happens. And I still got uh, the woodcutting experience you can see right there. So I got really confused a lot in this room, but what you essentially need to do is you need to cut down the tree uh, before killing the small mutadile, uh, which you pray ranged when it's far away from you and melee when it's close to you. And then there are mage hits that you cannot avoid, which uh, is from a big mutadile in the back. It's just in the water. You can't do anything about that. But when you cut down the tree, you can kill the small mutadile. Otherwise, it will infinitely heal if it's still alive. When you kill the small one, you can uh, go out of the room and um, the big mutadile will come out of the water. And then you can pretty much just kill that one. And uh, what you need to do is you need to try to safe spot it. But it also does the annoying thing where it um, backs off and goes forward like the small one is doing right now. So it uh, can actually unstuck itself from being safe spotted on different corners. But uh, yeah, it wasn't actually that big of a deal for me. You can actually see right now. I'm going to jump to uh, when I'm killing the, the final boss. Okay, so now you can see I got an overload plus drop, by the way. And I just ran in and picked it up. So now I'm attacking the big one. Uh, and I'm running all the way back here. And I'm praying ranged. Because I have ranged gear on, I have really high magic defense, so the magic hit won't hit me that much. The ranged hit can still hit you, by the way, even though you're praying. It's going to be reduced in damage only, though. Um, but yeah, I'm just safe spotting it here, and then the boss is just... It's, it looks so weird, it's walking uh, animation, but here we go. It gets stuck, and then I'm just shooting it. And after a bit, it will just randomly start unstucking itself, pretty much, because of its weird walking animation. You can see there, it just starts walking towards the open space. And if it gets into your melee range, it can like pretty much one shot you. It can hit like 90s. So I got really scared and I walked out and it just couldn't reach me. Like it looks like it can walk to me now. Apparently it can't though. I don't know. Maybe I was just really lucky. But now it pretty much after here just got stuck for uh, the entire fight in this specific area. Which was really nice and uh, it didn't actually do that much damage to me. So could just AFK here and finish it off. Okay, so look at the time. It's uh, 1 hour and 53 minutes. I think with all the knowledge that I have right now of everything, I could probably get to this point in roughly 50 minutes, maybe less, maybe like 45 minutes. So a lot of the time I was just AFK, but uh, yeah, let's see how this is going to go. Okay, so pretty much what happened is I was not ready at all, even though watching like four different guides... I was really confused on uh, what to do because there's so many things that happens at once. Also, another thing that I'm really wondering, and if you guys know, if you've done raids, uh, it's vastly different solo to group uh, content, right? Like, if you do this as a group, it's way different than if you do it as solo. Not just because of how much, like, if you have to do more damage or if you have to do more of this or this or, you know, but... The head, like, it looks at you, I think, and then you have to run back and forth to confuse it or something. I've seen a lot of people do that on uh, 
their YouTube videos or on uh, guides and so on. But because every single video that I saw was on uh, groups, I did not see any of them actually doing it. Like, all of them just stood there and DPSed, which um, made me not really understand how the head-looking mechanic works. And when I saw a guy ran back and forth, he pretty much took no damage at all. And me just trying it on my own, which obviously I'm failing miserably at, I took so much damage and I couldn't actually do much. Also, by the way, you can see that I'm like um, clicking on my magic dart every single time I shoot. I actually didn't know that you can uh, autocast it, so that's kind of a... That's kind of a yikes right there. But in the future, I will be using automatic magic dart because <laughs> I realized after my first attempt. But I did die pretty horribly and I didn't get far at all. Uh, I used a lot of my brews and I can definitely say that I do 100% need the better brews. Like, I'm just spamming brews at this point. And that is not because I am doing everything good and I just need better brews. That is just because I, I'm really terrible at this. Like, look at the time. 4 hours, 15 minutes. Yeah, that's how long I've been trying to kill the Olm. Like, I've died 15 times or something like that. And I've got it to the second last phase, or pretty much last phase, where I have to kill the hands and then the head. But yeah, I'm going to give up, unfortunately. And uh, I will explain a bit why in the next clip. Okay, so the thing is, I still have a lot of upgrades to do before I can do Olm at its most efficient, which is like, it's technically 90 Herblord just to make it uh, easier, but if you get rooms like the Mutadile rooms, you can actually get Overloads plus anyways, even if you're not 90 Herblord. But definitely one more level up. Look, I'm 800 experience off that 78, which is, I definitely need that. It's going to make it um, quite a lot easier actually to get brews that always heal more. And also on top of that, like I'm using a ring of wealth, which is just terrible. Uh, if I can get the brimstone ring, that is going to help me for all the different styles, like ranged, magic and melee, which is going to make it a lot easier to tri tribrid. And you, of course you need to do that on Olm. Uh, also like I've never done it before and having not the best gear and not the best advantages possible is going to be like the worst thing ever for me. And even completing a raid, dying like 10 times at Olm, which at the moment I am doing. Like, I could kill the boss, yeah, but it would take five hours with my current knowledge of the boss and, and all that. And uh, I would get literally nothing for it. I mean, I would get the points for completing a raid, but that's not really worth it. I, I really want to be able to clear raids in like 45 minutes, you know? And I really just don't feel like I am capable of doing that right now. Like, I watched a lot of guides, but I just couldn't understand the boss. And most of them said, all you have to do is just do the boss, like, a lot of times, and you will get this down. I did do 15 tries, pretty much. And I died every single time. And yet, I slowly got better at it, but not at the pace I really wanted to, which really demotivated me. And I still need, like, I can get a Dragon Hunter Lance from the Alchemical Hydra, which is going to help me a lot on the melee hand, like, a lot, a lot. So getting that would be huge. Also, as I said, getting the Brimstone Ring would be huge. Getting my Herblur up would be huge. Also, 90 Construction is really good because you can make the larger storage. All these different things is really why I don't want to do raids right now. It doesn't feel efficient and trying my first raids ever solo as well on the Twisted League. Like, I've seen some other people try raids for the first time on the Twisted League with worse gear than you can have in the main game, of course. But most of them did it as a group. And, of course, it will be easier then. Like, if all you have to do is just follow what the really good people do, then it's going to be very easy for you, regardless of how bad you are or whatever. But soloing a raid when you have never done it before, with less than optimal setups, that's not what I want to do, like, for real. So I'm going to probably grind a lot of Hydra, meanwhile also leveling my stats up too. Then in the later stages of the Twisted League, get into some raiding. I actually just got 78 Herblore, and I was like, yeah, I can make some Sarodomi brews with that, now that I can make them in raids. Apparently you can't do that. It's uh, 81 to make them in the normal outside game. See, 81 for Sarodomi brews, but in raids it's 78 for some reason. Oh yeah, I think I forgot to say I'm going to do some Hydra. I'm currently on 86 kill counts. That's the second Mystic drop. Extremely useless, but it's a drop. Oh no, dude. After 97 kills, I get my first drop and it's a Hydra tail. That is actually extremely demotivating. It's the only Hydra item that is completely and utterly useless. Okay, so when this dies, I will be at 100... Alchemical Hydra KC without a ring piece drop, 
which is to be expected. It's 1 in 181. Uh, just with the kills being 5 minutes, it is very slow to get 100 KC though. It took me a very long time actually, but yep, 50 points for that. I actually thought it would be 100, but 50 is okay, I guess. I just want to do a few masters to get closer to 25 milestone and 50 and so on. So I will turn some of my elites and uh, hard, medium, easy into masters. And of course, also, I want to get the herbs from these and the secondaries for herb lore leveling in the future. Okay, so I actually did a total of seven. I had to drop a few because I couldn't go into the highest tier of the farming guild, but let's get opening. Okay, that is terrible. I don't really need Alex. Okay, that's pretty good. I need Limvert Roots uh, and uh, Wine of Samurai, the secondaries and the herbs is... Oh! Robe Bottom of Darkness. Pretty good. Uh, not too useful, just fashion scape, really. Okay, I'm not getting a lot of herbs. I'm getting some of them, but... Oh, that is terrible. Uh, some more herbs and secondaries. That's exactly what I want. And the last one... Not that many herbs. Yeah, th 34 restores though. It's not too bad, but I expected a bit more actually. Okay, so first herb lore level coming in here, 79 herb lore. One more level and I will have another 80. And I actually have a lot of potions now in the bank. I made most of the restores that I got from the master. I think actually all of them. And then some ranging potions now. You can see I have 35 restores and 13 prayer potions. So I'm pretty good on that front now. I've never tried these before, but I'm going to try the Dragon Knives. I'm not going to do an entire kill with them, but I want to see if it's worth bringing them just for the special attack. So let's run in here, um, put the Protect on, and let's uh, see. Okay, now it's weekend. Let's put these on, and I will do a special attack. And let's see how much damage it is. Okay, so an 18 and a 0. Could be worth it. Okay, let's uh, do another try here. Let's see. Um, let's put these on and spec... Let's use all of them. Okay, 1 spec, 8, 6. Uh, that's a low experience drop. 6, 0, 11, 0. Yeah, it's probably not worth it to use this, actually. So I just calculated that 120,000 broad arrows is going to be enough to get 25 million fletching from where I'm at. So I will spend most of my 9 million right now on broad arrow tips. And I will slowly but surely work, work towards that 25 million fletching. I've actually been slacking on this a lot, but I've started planting these magic trees now, and I want to get 85 farming for that master crew step, so that is 137,000 farming experience every single time. Finally, dude. Okay, Hydra's Eye. After 116 KC, it's 1 in 181 drop rate, I think, so yeah, pretty lucky on that one. Feels good, man. Can I get a second one soon? And again, some more farming experience, very close back-to-back, -back, 137k experience drops, 77 farming, nice, nice. So, this is going to be another 80 skill, 80 herb lore incoming, which is a pretty good one. And only one more level until I can actually do Saradomin Bruce, that I can use outside of raids. So, 100 points for that, and another 80. So, on the next Willow here, I should get 90 woodcutting, which is, uh, well, it's not a task to get a 90 in a skill, but that means I can now cut a redwood. And uh, why I wanted to get 90 woodcutting is, I wanted to get a lot of arrow shafts, of course, but then also I wanted to be able to have something that I can AFK for another 99. And also, I will be bringing my knife to the redwoods and cut the ones into arrow shafts in the future that I need. Uh, also, I can make a uh, redwood shield now instead of this magic shield, which is going to be quite a, a nice upgrade. But um, yeah, I can have something to AFK whenever I want to do that for another 99 and 250 points. I actually have no idea how much experience every single cut is, so it might take a very long time before I get this cut. Oh, there we go. 3.8k experience. Also, I got an... Uh, what is that? Elite task done for the Kibos uh, in current area. So this is post commentary, but I actually died on Hydra for the first time in like 100 kill count. And I got poisoned and I didn't have an anti-poison. And then look, it ticked. And then I was like, okay, maybe if I pray or flick like this, just when the poison is about to hit, I'm going to try to do redemption. And so I did redemption in like two seconds now, I think. Now I did redemption, it procced, and then I was like, oh yeah, it drains all my prayer. And I was gonna prayer switch after that, but I forgot. I'm not sure if the next KC achievement is at 200 kill count or not. Yeah, it seems like it. So 125 kill count was not a task. So I will assume that the next one is at 200, unfortunately. But hopefully that one will be for 100 points instead of 50. So I actually have a goal of getting 50 million attack strength and defense, along with getting 50 million hit points, of course, for a lot of points. So I want to get a miter and a stole so I can in the future AFK with prayer a lot. And I'm going to do a Dagonoth task for mid clues. Actually, something I haven't done is a task for 100 points, which is just to cast this uh, Resurrect Crops. 
There you go, 100 points. Easiest points I've ever achieved, actually. Well, I didn't want to show every single medium clue reward, so I was only going to show the highlights, but uh, very quickly I got a highlight to drop, but it's uh, very useless. But wizard boots achieved, that took like no clues at all. Unfortunately, it could have been ranger boots. Okay, so I've done all the mediums and I got nothing significant. The last one was uh, strength amulet T, which is very useless as well. But uh, time to do the Dagonoth task for more medium clues. Okay, so it's time for me to get a lot of medium clues. Every single task I complete, I will have like 15 medium clues or something like that, and I will complete them. And uh, I will only stop doing this Dagonoth task when I have both a Mitre and a Stole. And after that, I can start doing maybe uh, Bloodveld tasks and stuff like that. And if I need more herbs, I will probably do Banshee tasks or just Herb Bronze if I have some seeds for it. These Dagonoths are dropping a lot of Snapdragon seeds, so I actually think I will gotta get a lot of them and then be able to make a lot of restores that I can use for Blood Velts in the future. By the way, I will still do uh, Alchemical Hydra runs now and then, so I will uh, not stop doing that. Same with the uh, farming runs for the trees. But anyways, that is going to do it for this video, so the grind for these two items will be in the next video. I hope you guys did enjoy this, and it really sucked that I didn't uh, actually finish a raid, but I spent four and a half hours in that raid, and I really didn't feel like continuing, but that's how it goes sometimes, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one guys, take care.